How to Prevent Guinea Worm Disease, Dracunculiasis Guinea worm disease is a painful and sometimes debilitating infection that affects impoverished countries around the world. Travelers to areas where safe drinking water is unavailable should take steps to prevent contracting the disease. You should also be careful to avoid an infection if you live in an area where guinea worm is prevalent. Make sure to find safe sources of water and treat any water you collect from ponds or rivers. In the event you do contract guinea worm, seek prompt treatment. Guinea worm is not as common as it once was, but do not take this to mean you should not take precaution against guinea worm. You should still take measures to protect yourself just in case. Part 1 Finding Safe Water 1. Drink bottled water, if possible. If bottled water is available in your area, drink it if at all possible. Bottled water should generally be safe from guinea worm infections, so stock up on bottled water in the store if it's within your budget. This can greatly reduce your risk of contracting guinea worm. If you're traveling to an area where guinea worm is present, bring bottled water in your checked bag. You may not be able to find bottled water in an area where guinea worm is present, so have some stocked up before you go. 2. Drink water from bore, hole wells, hand-dug wells, and springs. When collecting fresh water, you should not take water from just any source. You're vastly less likely to contract guinea worm if you look for water in bore, hole wells, dug wells, and springs. A bore, hole well is a narrow shaft bored into the ground, either horizontally or vertically. Typically, bore hole wells will have a metallic pipe stemming from the well, from which water is released. There will also be pavement around the well to prevent the bore, hole from collapsing. Look around your community for bore, hole wells and ask locals where you're likely to find them. If you see safe water supplies, such as hand pumps, near a well or spring, this is a good sign the water here is safe. Springs with protective walls surrounding them are less likely to be infected with guinea worm. 3. Look for flowing water. Flowing water is far less likely to be contaminated with guinea worm. Try to collect water from rivers and streams where water has a steady flow. This can help reduce your risk of collecting contaminated water. You can also collect water flowing from waterfalls. If you don't find any wells or other sources of clean water, spend some time searching out flowing water. 4. Use a pipe filter if you must drink from an unsafe source. If you're traveling long distances for work or other obligations, you may be unable to find safe water supplies. It can get very hot when traveling, and it's dangerous to go long periods without water. Carry a pipe filter. You can drink water from a potentially dangerous source if you drink it through the filter. Place one end of your pipe filter in the questionable water. Place your lips on the other end of the filter and drink through the straw. The filter should offer some protection from guinea worm. Keep in mind this should be a last resort. Always exhaustively search for safe sources of water before using a filtered straw to drink from an unsafe source. You should also pack bottled water if you're traveling a long distance. Part 2 Maintaining Clean Water 1. Prevent people with guinea worm sores or ulcers from entering ponds containing drinking water. If you or anyone you know has guinea worm sores or ulcers, these sores can contaminate clean water. Ask that people with sores do not walk or bathe in clean water sources. If you are recovering from a guinea worm infection yourself, Stay away from clean water until you have a clean bill of medical health. 2. Filter water with a cloth after collecting it. Even when collecting water from a safe source, filter it before drinking. Place a piece of clean cloth over a bucket. Then, pour your collected water through the cloth into the bucket. You may catch some guinea worm maggots by doing this. You can also feed water through a large pipe filter or use something like a Brita filter on water. This can also help remove guinea worm maggots. If you're traveling to an area where guinea worm is present, bring a water filtration system with you. 3. Use an approved larvicide on unsafe water. If you have to collect water from an unsafe source, use a larvicide on the water before drinking it. Approved larvicides include products like abate. They kill tiny fleas and larvae that can cause a guinea worm infection. Follow the instructions on the package for use. You can find larvicides at some local stores. Ask locals about where to find larvicides. If you're traveling to an area with guinea worm, consider buying larvicide online ahead of time. Take it with you on your trip. 
Part 3 Treating an Infection 1. Recognize the Symptoms of an Infection Guinea worm is a serious medical concern. If you believe you have contracted guinea worm, prompt medical treatment is vital to your well-being. If you notice any symptoms of guinea worm infection, seek medical help immediately. Fever, swelling, and pain near the infected area are usually the first signs of an infection. You will not have symptoms for about a year after becoming infected. If you travel to an area where guinea worm is a problem, do not assume symptoms you have months later are not related to guinea worm. 2. Remove the worm slowly. A guinea worm takes months to be removed. It will emerge a few centimeters a day from a certain body part. Typically, guinea worms emerge from the legs or feet. Treatment is a matter of slowly removing the worm while covering your wound for the duration of the day. In most cases, the worm will take months to fully emerge. Sometimes, however, it may only take a few weeks to rid yourself of a guinea worm. Usually, a doctor winds the worm around a small stick each day as it comes out of your body. Then, the wound is covered in gauze for the remainder of the day. Be very careful about personal hygiene when a guinea worm infection is being treated. You are more prone to bacterial infections during this time. Make sure you change your gauze regularly. 3. Take medicine to manage pain. The process of removing a guinea worm is incredibly painful. Over, the counter painkillers, like ibuprofen, can be used to manage the pain. Make sure you do not take more than the recommended dosage on the bottle. If you are on any existing medications, talk to your doctor before you begin to take medication for guinea worm. If you're dealing with young children with a guinea worm infection, make sure you opt for child safe painkillers. 4. Find someone to take care of your work and family obligations while you recover. You will be laid up for the months your guinea worm infection is being treated. Guinea worm infections are debilitating because they are so painful. You will be unable to care for your children or go into work. Make sure you find a friend or family member to take care of your obligations during the recovery process. Check your office's policy on sick leave. See if you can get medical leave while your infection is being treated. You could also look into working remotely if your guinea worm infection is a problem. Tips Before traveling to areas known to have frequent guinea worm infections, talk to your travel agency for health updates and any specific warnings that may exist for the area of travel. If you have traveled to an area at risk of the disease, be aware of any blisters that may appear on your legs or feet within a year. See your doctor if there is an intense burning sensation in the area. Warnings there is no drug treatment for guinea worm disease and no vaccine to prevent infection.